This show has a lot of heart that I don't think would have come through from any other studio. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> There's an authenticity to it and a sincerity that's uh, just heartwarming. I don't think anyone has seen stories quite like the ones that we're going to tell. <laughs> you serious? Okay, before we start this analysis or short brief analysis i want to i want to have a, a quick psa to anybody who's watching this and that is go after your dreams even if you got no talent like you know absolutely nothing you don't want to put any work into it go for it i mean high guardian spice exists if this can exist your crap can exist too don't let anyone including me tell you not to do this I means steven grew it's a thing neil breen is a thing. High Guardian Spice is a thing. You have no excuse. But go out, out there and make the crappiest thing your imagination can think of. Feel better about yourself? Okay, good. <laughs> Hello and welcome back to Story Science with DJ Finley. I am, of course, your hostess, DJ Finley, and I don't know how many people know this is an educational channel. We try. We try. I, I know there's been a lot of reviews on it, mostly, you know, to keep up with the times, but this is an educational channel built around communications and why things work. Mm -hmm. Mainly in storytelling, because that's what I care about. I'm a storyteller, I am a story editor, content editor, I guess, I'm a communications major. I write, you know, I'm a writer. You know, hopefully my first book will come out soon. My crap. See, my PSA was also for me. <laughs> <laughs> And High Guardian Spice is a thing. Did you know that? Well, I hope we know that. <laughs> <laughs> you suffered through it with me. Uh, yeah, I, I watched it. We watched all of it. Mm-hmm. Took us, like, what, a whole week? <laughs> two weeks? Two, a while. Two weeks. We didn't watch it in one day. Although, another PSA, if you want to be productive, say you're going to watch this show, your brain will come up a million things you oh, want to do instead. Oh, yeah. Oh, man, yeah. There were so many times when... Essie was like, I can't watch it, but you can watch it if you want. And I'd be like, okay, yeah. I, the, the, the dishes need to get done. The house needs to be vacuumed. Or the dog needs to be washed. Or walked. Or fed. Or brushed. Or just petted. petted. <laughs> Played with. Yeah, th this show will make you productive. If you are a procrastinator, all you have to do is tell yourself, I can either watch two episodes or an episode of High Guardian Spice. Or I can do the dishes. You will choose the dishes. I did. <laughs> Many times. The kitchen was so clean during the two weeks we tried to watch this show. Yeah. So, but because there's so much to cover on this, and the reason there's so much to cover is this is the ultimate, it was, I don't know, maybe there's one worse than this, but to me, this is like the ultimate, ultimate, I can't even speak, this show has cursed me. Yeah. The ultimate, oh, what is it, example of amateur writing? Yeah. This, this thing is so amateur, like, I'm actually kind of glad it exists, because I don't just sit there trying to figure out how to give example of amateur writing. Yeah. This show has done it for me. So, it's either a gift sent by God to give me a teaching tool, or it's a gift sent by Satan <laughs> to torture me. I'm really not sure yet. which. <laughs> I am not sure which. I'm hoping it's a, it's a gift sent from God. Fingers crossed. Maybe. <laughs> We'll find out if I end up in a sanatorium. Okay, so because there's so much to talk about with how bad this is, we split it up into four categories. Yeah. This doesn't cover everything. Oh, no. These are just the really obvious issues with the, with the um, thing. And we're going to mainly stay in writing. Like, yes. other people have covered other issues. Animation, voice Animation, acting, production. Issue, like the, the topic of the show. Mm -hmm. We're going to try and stay away from most of that, mostly. We might slip a few things in, but this is mainly on the This writing. is about writing, and I. this is for people who are amateurs, and to tell you how not to be an amateur, or at least help you know, if, if you're wondering, am I amateur or am I intermediate, this podcast will hopefully tell you. Hopefully. By the end of it. 
So please stick it through to the end. Do not leave a comment until you have finished this podcast. I will know if you listen to the entire podcast by your comments. <laughs> All right? The things you, you put in your comments, I will know if you've watched watch the whole podcast. Mm-hmm. And look like an idiot. All right. Okay. All right. So we have into four sections, as you can see. For the video people, you can see it on the screen. For the audio people, we will tell you which ones we are on. So section one, characters. High Guardian Spice is about four girls who live in a magical city and are going to school to become guardians. These are not characters. Mm-mm. None of these are characters. You see, characters have things called personality, personal interests, relationships, and beliefs. And you might be sitting there going, well, DJ Finley, they, they do have those things. Okay, um, mm, this is one thing that tells me when someone's an amateur, is when they say, well, I have those. Okay. A little bit. Uh, you see, okay. This is where I hate archetypes. Okay, because writers like to, well, amateur writers, like to do the bare minimum of work with their characters. And it shows. You might think you have this really fleshed out character. I know all these scenes about my character. But the problem is, is that it's the basic level of stuff. And I... The more I hear about this, and everyone's been telling me, well, it's a cookie-cutter character. What is a cookie-cutter character? A cookie-cutter character is a character who is just the basics. Mm -hmm. That's what these things are. These are not characters. These are not even people. These are the basics. The basic outline of a character. This character is grumpy. This character is nice. This character is also nice, but has different problems from the previous nice one. This character can't decide if she's the grumpy or the nice one this you see what i'm saying like you have four main girl four main girls you got parsley sage rosemary and thyme and you got two nice ones you got parsley and sage Mm -hmm. they're the two nice ones they both have family issues the more you think about those two girls they're very similar Mm -hmm. we don't really get into what makes them different how they clash how they don't clash how they get along uh rosemary and thyme they were supposed to be the more prickly ones the more hardened once. Well, it's time is supposed well, to Well, time be. is. And then Rosemary... She flips. She's, she's, she's a, a trout on land. She can't decide. Yeah, because one second she's the outgoing, noisy one, mm-hmm. and then the next second she's the... Get away from my lock in my, my picture. She's the huffy. I don't want to talk about it. Yeah, I'm I'm tough and I'm, I'm, I'm too broken to discuss this. <laughs> no, you're not. You know, you're, you're not even the character who puts on a, a smile even though their life is terrible. Your life, first off, isn't that bad. You're just missing your mom. You, you got a dad and brother who love you. So I, she doesn't show any, like, bonding to them. No. Or how they've impacted her life. It's just momsy, 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 momsy. It's like, I mean, this character would be more um, believable if she grew up in an orphanage. Yeah. My mom disappeared and I've been going between foster homes. That would make more she sense. She doesn't mention her dad or brother once, really. Except... That the one cheesecake's her dad. Her dad's. That's he, it. He's defined by cheesecake. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's his definition. So, cookie cutter characters. So, the more I heard about people saying this, I came up with this analogy called the gingerbread. Or gingerbread man, depending on how triggered you get. So, the dough is your basic archetype, which is what I hate. Like your hero of sidekick. Yeah. Really. You're, you can see who everybody is just by looking at them. This is the hero. This is the sidekick. This is the damsel. This is the villain. The funny person. This is the best friend. The, the, you can tell who everybody is. Mentor, everyone. It's very obvious. And that's completely fine when you're first developing the story. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, you don't know these characters yet because you've just met them. Mm-hmm. But before your audience can meet them, you need to know basically everything you should about these characters, which is the baking process. This is where you take that raw dough, you put it in the oven, and you get to know them. You get to kind of see how they react. Because if you ever like baked gingerbread cookies, you know that some of them keep their shape really well, and some of them kind of like mutate. <laughs> so when I make them, they do. Yeah, they kind of spill out, or they become really thin and crispy, mm-hmm. or they stay plump and doughy. Yeah, so you get some different kinds of of characters. Any of the ones who... that go through the mill and they are all black and gross. <laughs> yeah. Like you left them in too long and then you got to throw them out because now that character is no longer usable. <laughs> I've done that too. Mm-hmm. But cookies and characters. <laughs> but yeah, so you want to bake them. That's writing them. And as you write them, pay attention to them. A good example is, so I have a podcast on my podcast site. If you go to, I think it's Spotify or Apple podcast or you know i have links in the description of all my pod or my podcast that's available uh i have one on personality i had a character who i thought 
was one personality before I wrote the first draft. I wrote the first draft and realized he was a completely different personality. He just had traits of the personality I originally thought he was. You learned that. Mm-hmm. Oh, I had you down as the wrong personality. Let me fix that. You know, let me put you down as the correct personality so when I go back and edit the book, I'm editing the correct personality mm-hmm. so that you come across better. Uh, and then you have decorating. Now, the decorating is what makes your character unique. This is when you finally know who this character is. Mm-hmm. And you're like, oh, I know more about your backstory. I know more about who you are now. I know more about who you were. And I have, no, I have a pretty good idea who you're going to be. Mm-hmm. Which means as you go back and you edit... <laughs> If you don't edit your stories, you are an amateur. <laughs> you edit the book and the story, and you're like, okay, I can put this in. I can foreshadow this thing. I need to change this line. I need to like work on this part. This person didn't react properly in this uh, chapter, so I need mm-hmm. to change the way they reacted. So you know that way you can get the characters correct. You're not going to get them correct in the first draft. Mm-hmm. Fun fact: I never have. You probably don't either. These characters or things. These things. They don't have any of that. Rosemary is super inconsistent. Mm -hmm. She is constantly whining about her mom, and her her mom's sword is apparently important to the fact that some people recognize it. Yeah, that's never a thing where it's like... Never explained. She doesn't even have that arc where the fact that people know who your mom Mm -hmm. is, now everyone's like, why aren't you that good? Yeah. She doesn't even get that. It's like, oh, your sword, cool. Yeah, her past doesn't really affect her at all. It's just like, oh, your mom's this person, that's cool. No. And then... Seriously? She's that one. There's, there's nothing. Where I grew up. People knew about my grandparents. Yeah. I'd be in the like somebody give me a ride, and they'd be like, "Oh, I read your grandpa's book," and I'd be like, "Oh, here it goes again." <laughs> so like, oh no. You know? Oh, you're that. You're you're so and so's granddaughter, or that because I had the last same last name as my grandparents. It was like, do you know this? Your last name is this. Do you know the people in this town with that same last name? Yeah, they're my grandparents. <laughs> I got that a lot. Mm-hmm. And then I was like, oh, I know your grandparents. Yay! Seriously? <laughs> They're not even famous! <laughs> so, <laughs> Rosemary's mom was apparently kind of famous. Yeah. Sort of. Mm-hmm. Well, sword was. Why is her sword famous? No mm-hmm. clue. Sage, her parents, or at least her mom, has a problem with new magic. Why? How does that affect Sage outside of the whole, my mom might get mad at me? Yeah, she doesn't even... It really doesn't affect even like, her. Okay, then later it's shown that she's not... She has a hard time with the Terra Sphere. Mm-hmm. So that means she has a hard time with magic. She has a hard time with the Terra Sphere until suddenly she doesn't have a problem with the Terra Sphere. Yeah. I can't remember why, and I'm not going back to check and everything. So it's literally like... Because oh, I can't use new magic. Slime Boy explained Terra Spheres to her. I guess. And then I get one, and the next episode I don't want to use it. Yeah. It's like... Okay. Um, mm-hmm. Shouldn't these scenes be flipped where, like, you're going through school... It's kind of like the kid who's never used a computer and mm-hmm. they still want to use a typewriter and the teacher's like, excuse me, like, <laughs> what the heck are you doing? It's like, you think that would have shown up more? Especially when she doesn't have one. I mean, once you got one, then yeah, girl, you got one. What's your excuse? Practice and besides rocking around the school in the morning. I don't know, whatever. Okay, and then parsley. I mean, the only reason people like this character the most, at least for most reviews I've watched, she's the character everyone seems to like. Probably the one, she's the closest to an actual person because I've met girls who are exactly like Parsley in real life. Oh, yeah. There's like, she, like, she there's, has the there's most... This girl, there's a type of girl that just brings people together. Yeah, she, she does. You never hang out, you go to hang out with them, but somehow you end up with them. Yeah, it's weird. It's like they're a magnet. Yeah, there's the personality magnet. And everything's like, oh, yeah, everyone's in my group. And everyone's getting... It's like everyone tolerates everybody else because she's there. Yeah. I met these people. Yes, they, they exist. So like, I was never one of those people. At least that part them. was somewhat realistic. Like, she's mm-hmm. the most realistic home life, except the fact that all her brothers seem to be about the same age. That, that no one needs to explain that bit. They don't explain her brothers or what her. They don't even explain her family dynamic, really. Like, why do they depend on her so much? She has brothers. Yeah, they're all apparently too young. Like, she doesn't have any brothers that are, like, close in age to her. Who now have to pick it up. Her, but, her brothers are know. just a bunch of. Like everybody else in this show, they're just a bunch of sounds with form. Yeah. That's, that's, that's how you describe these things. They're, they're sounds with form. Physical form. Mm-hmm. That's it. Yeah, pretty much. And that's an insult to sound. <laughs> and then time is the most infuriating? Because she has the biggest, like... She's the most interesting story. She's the most interesting story arc, but she's also... Okay, you get that she has... Okay, one example of this. Mm-hmm. 
That's one thing I really don't like about this show is the pacing of it. And mm-hmm. I don't think we put it on anywhere in here. Uh, so the pacing bit where, okay, she's spending all this time. She's upset she can't go home to try and help things out. She's not talking to her mom because she's like, you're wasting my time sending me to school and they're not talking, blah, blah, blah. And then she has an opportunity. Okay, I found this magic water that will help, like, cure my homeland. And it apparently seems to wait a month until a festival is going to be held before she tries, like, telling anybody about it. Mm-hmm. And then she loses it. Yeah, then she loses it. Like, and then doesn't even go tell her mom, like, hey, mom, we found this one thing. Okay, yeah, you hate talking to your mom. Suck it up and go talk to her. If you care that much about your homeland, suck it up. Or at least leave and go talk to your dad. Go talk to your dad. Run away from home. Something. Yeah. I don't know. She's and also, past the I mean, time her, is forgetting. Her, um, her, her solution is go talk to a demon and waste a bunch of time. Yeah, and she even says, I wasted time. <laughs> oh, yeah! No kidding! <laughs> oh, my gosh. Also, another thing, um, Parsley and Snapdragon have a very similar storyline, where it's like they don't want to end up like their parents, or yeah. be like their one major parent, which is the same gender parent. So, like, Parsley doesn't want to be like her mom, mm-hmm. and Snapdragon doesn't want to be like his dad. And so, but you don't really see those two clash of them, the clash of this, these two with their ideologies, because Parsley is going to the school to not be like her parents, mm-hmm. her mom, mainly. Yeah. Snapdragon is being forced to go to this school to be, to be his like dad. his dad. Yeah, there is a super interesting character dynamic there that they do nothing with. No, nothing. Okay, dialogue. Now you're going to look at this slide for those of you who are looking at the video. Uh, you're probably going to think I copy pasted this from character because I have under dialogue personality, personal interest, relationships, age, beliefs, situations, and scripts. Why do I have, Essie, why do I have similar themes in dialogue? Because you can show about character through dialogue. The reason you speak has to do with these. Your personality, what you say, has to do with your personality. Your interest. Now, personal interest in this one kind of means more along the lines of what you're hoping to gain from this. What, what Are you interested in building a relationship with the person you're talking to? Are you interested in getting rid of them as fast as possible? Mm-hmm. Uh, are you trying to like further some, a goal of some sort? What are you doing in this interaction? That's personal interest. Every character in an interaction needs to have a personal motive. Mm-hmm. Are you trying to get rid of them? Are you trying to be friends with them? Uh, you give a character who one's trying to get rid of the character, the other character's trying to be friends with the character. Those are mm-hmm. usually really fun. But they have a, a goal or a motive that they're going for. Relationships. You speak differently to different people. Mm-hmm. Fun fact. Cause example, look at all the honorifics Japan has. Yeah. And also, different people speak differently to different relationships. Like, you know, I have a very casual way that I talk to my parents. That horrifies a lot of my friends. Oh, yeah. They're like, oh, you talk to your mom like that. You know, I talk to my mom like she's my friend, like one of my girlfriends. Mm-hmm. You know, i sarcastic with her. I like, you know, I make a bunch of jokes and stuff. And she does it right back to me. We, we sound like girlfriends mm-hmm. when we talk. I have no real, like, respectful sounding thing. Uh, when I'm talking to her, I horrify so many people. Mm-hmm. They don't get my mom's cool with it. I mean, she gives it back to me, like, <laughs> constantly. I have a lot of friends who call their parents, they don't even call their parents mom and dad, it's sir to their faces. Ugh. Sir and uh, ma'am. I have friends who do that. Oh, fun. That's their family dynamic. Mm-hmm. You know, I would listen to them, I was at college, and one of my friends was on the phone with their parents, and they was like, mm-hmm. yes, sir. And I was just like, okay. <laughs> it's like, you know, so that shows a lot about relationships right there. You know, I have a more relaxed relationship with my parents than those friends Mm -hmm. have with their parents it shows a lot about like the relationships people have with each other by what words they use tones of voice physical actions and also their motives with these people they kind of bring it up a little bit in this show but they don't really show anything like okay so time and her mom have some problems but we don't really get into it no it's more like i want to talk about i want to talk about i don't want to talk about yeah it's like i want to talk about i'm like okay all right, thanks. So, like, why do I? Why should I care? You, you don't want. Okay. I mean, at least Parsley talked to her parents, but yeah. you don't even have Sage like call up her mom and ask her why did you ditch new magic. I mean, that's a little suspicious. Her mom just ditched it. Yeah. Because they have this whole thing where Sage's mom used to use new magic and had a tarot sphere, and then she went back to being conservative, as they put it. And I'm like, that why? was me. And someone told me that my mom used to be a hippie and do drugs which she never did, but I'm just using this as an example. I w- my first reaction would be to pick up the phone and call and say, hey, Ma, guess what I found out? Um, someone's trying to make me do drugs, and they told me that it's okay because you did drugs. Um, why did you quit drugs? <laughs> and why should I not or should follow in your footsteps? 
Because it seems like, it's not even like Sage has a bad relationship with her mom. Concerned that, no, like, they didn't show anything. Not really. Her mom's pretty scared, chill. She's scared to do something her mom wouldn't want her to do, which to me says that she respects her mom. For the most part, yeah. I think. I, I thought. Maybe she mm-hmm. doesn't. I don't know. But, you know, it's like, why don't you write to your mom and ask? Which we will get to that in a moment. But also, talking does solve a lot of problems. You might be saying, oh, well, that's why they don't talk, is because talking solves problems. Talking also creates problems. Fun fact, every time you solve a problem, you create a new problem. Mm-hmm. Did you know that? But you didn't. So if you have a character solve one problem, that progresses the story to a new problem. <laughs> so, yeah, having... Someone like Sage talk to her mom and be like, why did you ditch new magic? Could have also helped us understand more about the magic crisis going on. that's going on. So it's like, oh, we now know problem. Why her mom doesn't like new magic. Solved. New problem. The reason why she doesn't, why she new doesn't magic. Want, want to do it. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, how do we deal with that? Um, age. The character's age greatly affects how they talk. Mm-hmm. Another thing that people keep forgetting with dialogue is knowledge. All right. So, like, do, do these characters know Truth or false? Mm-hmm. You know, because you can have a diehard person who is strongly dedicated to a false narrative. Oh, yeah. Because they believe that narrative to be true, which is where a lot of that danger zone comes in because, you know, you have the diehards who are holding on to the truth and become, you know, radical at it mm-hmm. to the point that the truth isn't worth holding on to. And then you got the people who are holding on to false narratives to the point where it's like, it might as well be true. Mm-hmm. That's where you get into that, that issue. And I've noticed that they don't really get into that. In no. the story, which is kind of weird because it's all about like magic and stuff and gender and marriage and a lot of times when you could actually have an interesting discussion. Eh. Uh, beliefs that falls into age, your age, your beliefs change with your age. Mm-hmm. Um, situation, what's happening? What is the situation of they don't really set any stage? Uh, scripts. Okay, remember what I was talking about? You talk differently to different people. Scripts are socially acceptable ways of talking phrases they don't really have that it re- it's, it's a way to show the culture yeah you know i, I know what i've noticed with amateur writers is they don't like scripts oh no they would notice that or they overuse scripts so scripts is like okay so like i'm walking down the street and i see essie and i go hey essie what's Hello. up how you doing good how you doing i've seen you forever what you been up to eh, so so how you been doing yeah, it's all right. You know, holidays can, you know, drive me crazy. Those are scripts. Yeah. These are socially approved <laughs> words and phrases and topics you are allowed to talk about. Socially acceptable. Understanding these little scripts. Hey, how are you? I'm doing good. Okay, that's cool. You can also type that up. This is really cool. Fun fact. You can type that up in a conversation. And then mm-hmm. when you go back and edit, you can usually sometimes take it out and get right to the meat. Yeah. But it usually helps when you're writing a conversation to put the scripts in when you first write it, and then when you go back and edit it, figure out which scripts you need to keep and which scripts you need to throw out. Yeah. Because a lot of it also depends on the relationship. So when writing dialogue, I brought this thing up in several of my podcasts, managing meaning. Because that's basically what dialogue is, is two people or three people or multiple people managing meaning. Mm -hmm. And that's something I've noticed um, amateur writers don't get, is that what you're really doing is writing a bunch of characters trying to figure out what the other character's talking about. Yeah. Which is what a conversation is. You're trying to figure out what the other person's talking about. <laughs> no, that, that's all you're doing. You know, even if you were, like, in sync with the person, you are still trying to figure out what they're saying so that you can respond to what they are saying. Mm-hmm. So, an easy way of doing this... There's, now, there's a lot that goes into managing meaning, but for this episode, we're going to go into my easy thing that I do constantly, which is why I brought it up, and that is... Content, speech, act, and episode. So content is number one. The actual information that initiates a situation is presented in either speech or written message. So basically what that's talking about is this is what initiates the interaction. It's also what this interaction is going to be about. Okay, so before you write a conversation, a good thing to do is to figure out what's the point of this conversation? What am I getting at? What are these characters getting at? What is each character hoping to get out of this? Then you have speech act. This is how people are going to act or react to or with the information given them. 
You know, this is stuff like threats, promises, questions, suggestions, assumptions. The way that these characters are going to respond to this information. Mm -hmm. You know, so either they're going to respond well, or they're going to respond badly, or they're going to need a moment to figure out how to respond to the situation. And that also tells you a lot about the character and how the characters change, you know, over time, and how they respond to certain situations. So this is, this is the actual action that's going on inside the content. Then you have episode. So episode, which sounds kind of funny since we're talking about a TV show, is the broader situation and continuation of the interaction based on past, present, and future interactions. So basically, how you're acting in this situation is based on past events with this person. So let's say, you know, Essie and I are two long lost friends who see each other at the supermarket. You know, last time we saw each other was on a good note. Mm -hmm. So we're going to see each other on a good note. You know, oh, hey, I'm so happy to see you again. Mm -hmm. You know, how long has it been? What have you been up to? Tell me everything. So that reaction is going to be really good in the present situation. Because mm -hmm. the present situation is always affected by the past. Mm -hmm. Always. So someone you did not see on a good note, you're going to act really, you know, uppity with or not happy to be talking to this person or in the same room with this person because you had a bad interaction mm -hmm. last time you saw each other. Okay, example from the show. Right. First episode. Um... <laughs> Rosemary almost whacks Time's face off with a sword, mm -hmm. and they have another interaction after that where she's also obnoxious to Time's face. Next day, first day of class, uh, they run into Parsley, who they had good terms with. They go, hey, how you doing? I, like, good to see you in class. And then Time walks up behind her, and Parsley goes, oh, this is my new roommate. Awkward. Awkward. <laughs> Which they did kind of do. Yeah, they did have, they did try to do it. Like, in that one bit, they actually kind of had the scripts and the interactions in the episode. Mm -hmm. And now they have to deal with, yeah, we were not exactly on great terms last time we met. And now we have this girl who was our mutual acquaintance. Friend of me. Yeah. So now we have this girl who's now part of the group and you can't get rid of her. But there's one slight problem, which I'm, I was getting to, which is on the episode is the continuation of the mm -hmm. interaction, which is the future. Mm -hmm. And it didn't entirely set up what their future with time is going to be in that interaction. Mm -mm, not really. Because just kind of like you have the girls react to, oh, your roommate is the uppity girl who we met yesterday. Who got upset that I almost whacked her face out with a sword. Yeah. <gasps> how the horror. How rude of you. <laughs> they didn't really set any groundwork. No. Because that's what you're doing in every interaction you're doing in real life is you're setting groundwork for the next time you see this person. Mm -hmm. I just made everyone self-conscious now, didn't I? <laughs> <laughs> so, and that's what you should be doing with characters. In every interaction, how is these characters, how are the characters going to see each other next time they see each other? Mm-hmm and react to each other and, you know, work off of each other. That is all about dialogue mm -hmm. because that's what the characters are doing and within every instance. So it's always a good idea to have content, speech act, and episode. Okay, character arcs and goals. Now I'm going to talk about, <laughs> what's her name, Amaryllis? Yes. Okay, now we're going to talk about Amaryllis, who's arguably my personal favorite character in this trash fire. <laughs> yes. I love her. <laughs> I absolutely adore this character. She is, she trash talks the main characters. I love it. Anyone who trash talks, trash talks, can't even say it. The four main characters, it's okay in my book. <laughs> I love her. Okay, so a character arc is basically the character begins as one sort of person and gradually transforms into a different sort of person in response to changing developments in the story. Thank you, Wikipedia. <laughs> Amaryllis is the only person I think actually has that. In the last few episodes of the story. Yeah? I mean, Amaryllis is an interesting character because she's kind of a mix of fiery pineapple personality mixed with really bad um, coping mechanisms. Yeah. Because you find out a little bit about her past. You know, mm -hmm. she has very dysfunctional parents. She comes mm -hmm. from a very dysfunctional household. She's from a, another region that the other girls are Yeah, she's are from not. this very risky society. Mm -hmm. she's, she's used to everything being one way. So when she hits a barrier with like, oh, you don't do it my way? What's wrong with you? Kind of with yeah. Thing. And you can tell that there's been a lot of crap in her life based mm -hmm. on her coping mechanisms of um, superiority, mm -hmm. which superiority is a coping mechanism, actually. Fun mm -hmm. fact. Mm -hmm. And that's actually made it really interesting to me because it's like, okay, here's a character who her arc can go either good or bad. Oh, yeah. You know, either she can be one of the most awesome heroes or she could be a pretty awesome villain, depending on which direction she chooses to go. In the end of the series, of this season, mm -hmm. it's like she's on her way to becoming a hero mm -hmm. because uh, they have the setup where she and Snapdragon are playing this 
virtual reality game. Mm -hmm. And the point of the game is to save the school from this one monster thing, monster attack thing. And you find out from Parsley that the way to beat the game is you and the partner are supposed to team up and save the students first. And then you can, you get points and stuff from and that. And all the students help you. And then um, the students help the, you beat the bad guy. to defeat the bad guy, which is, you know, that's a kind of an interesting game mechanic. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the season, the students and teachers are trapped in the basement and the school set on fire. And she's the one who takes charge <laughs> and gets everybody out. Yeah. In a couple of episodes, she has more of a character arc and growth than <laughs> the four main characters. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's and that's actually, she actually has an interesting character issue where it's like, you know, she has to figure out what is her actual personality and what's just a coping mechanism. You know, she has the ability of being a nice person. Yeah. You see her with Snap and it's like, oh. yeah, oh. she's really cute with Snap. She's adorable. I kind of ship them. <laughs> Slightly. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. I do like them as a brother-sister kind of <laughs> relationship. But, mm -hmm. you know, she is, in my opinion, the best written character <laughs> in this whole trash fire. Like, this whole... <laughs> dumpster fire of a mess it's like she has a past that's affected her greatly mm -hmm. uh she has no idea exactly what she wants out of life you know she tolerates the main characters even though she <laughs> bad mouths them a lot mm -hmm. she has the capability of being a great leader mm -hmm. which i would love to see more of she's definitely more of a delegator than an actual fighter mm -hmm. you know she does have some angry issues which is pretty awesome <laughs> But it's like, you know, I want to see more of this. I want to see her become a leader. I want to see her, mm -hmm. you know, take charge and be awesome and epic because she's got it. Mm -hmm. You know, and she needs a goal. She needs to figure out what she wants mm -hmm. in her life and work towards it. And I want, I'm actually rooting for her. It's mm -hmm. like, I want you to find your goal and I want you to succeed and I want you to get it and be happy. Mm -hmm. you, you can burn the four main characters in Snapdragon, that's fine, but uh, <laughs> Snapdragon should probably live because Amaryllis likes him, but, you know, they're the four Parsley, Sage, Rosemary, and Time. They can die. <clears throat> but don't touch my Amaryllis. I love her. <laughs> I absolutely, absolutely adore this character. <laughs> she's so cute! She's annoying! I love her! <laughs> she's the best because she actually went somewhere. Yeah. The other four, they went nowhere. Yeah. They just kind of... I mean, poor Parsley had, like, the worst out of the bunch because they're like, oh, this new bitch and my parents resolved. And then she kind of just flounders through the rest of the yeah, show. Yeah, they just kind of... They're there. Yeah, they kind of just ditched her. They don't like, do squats. I mean, I was just putting them for their excuse to me. They turned her to stone and kind of forgot about her for the rest of the season. That would but, be then funny. They, but then they brought her back the next episode. It's like, dang it. It's like... <laughs> you can only wish. <laughs> it's like, that would... Something... <laughs> but yeah, like the the main four girls, they do not grow. Mm -hmm. They don't go through. I mean, you have you have a little bit of a possible growth between uh, Rosemary and Sage, which is you know they're growing up and Sage is trying to make new friends mm -hmm. and be her own person because she's too hampered mm -hmm. by Rosemary. You know that's something that's actually a good thing for Rosemary to cope with because she is that way. Mm -hmm. But no, she and Sage are like, no, we're still besties to the end, and nothing could ever separate the two of us. And I'm like, no. Please, just, just go your own ways. Mm -hmm. You know, that's a bad message, actually. I mean, really interesting, like, in school arc, like, they all have arcs in a certain way, because you have Rosemary, who needs to kind of get smacked down a peg a few times, but never does. She doesn't really she gets to be validated all the time. Then you have... This is validation the time. show. Oh, yeah, validation this is validation the show. The show. Um, Sage has to deal with, okay, I was taught one way, now I have to learn how to deal with my these two realities, new and old magic, which would have been interesting, mm -hmm. except they kind of just... Oh, she finally... Oh, she sees the teacher blend them, so now do she knows how once. to do it. Once. At the very end. And then it's fine. And she can do it. Well, now she can do it. Yay. Without any training or preparation or... And she's totally chill anything. losing her hair. Yeah, she just cuts her right And that's, that's not a big deal at all in anything. So, yeah, whatever. And then time... Eh. She, she's the one with the most um, to lose. the most it's... interesting storyline, but she doesn't... like. But, like... Then, then when she does hit like, um, oh, you hit a thing. Oh, you learned something. Then she kind of just wanders around because the plot doesn't need her to go do anything yet. Yeah, it's like, you know, her whole thing is I want to save my home. And then she gets the ability to save her home, and she does nothing with it. No. And then she loses it, because the cat girl pours it down the drain. Yeah, just drops it, boop, done. Okay, basically. But it's like, so what was the point of all that? I mean, it doesn't raise stakes or anything. Mm-mm. Because it's like, well, you could have done something, girl. So you don't even feel bad No, you're time. like, then wh why are you taking so long? Yeah, it's like, okay, this actually means something to you. You should be doing something about it. You know what's bad when, when Neppy Cat would be a better protagonist than these four Neppy Cat was actually one I of love Neppy Cat. <laughs> I, Neppy, I just wanted a story with Neppy Cat, Amaryllis, and Snapdragon. Yeah. And maybe um, Caraway. Yeah. Going on adventures together. 
That'd be nice. <laughs> that would have actually been a good show. Oh boy, here we go. <laughs> uh, we now enter the realm of world building. Where DJ number Finley two is going to explode <laughs> into a million pieces because the flames. It it the f- it flame flames flames on the side of my face, breathing breath heaving breaths. After twelve episodes of this thing, mm-hmm. I made a short list of questions that were never answered. Within this 12 episode of 25-ish minute episodes. Some of that 22 something. Okay, here's my short list of things, of questions I had that were never answered. What century is this? What is this country world's history? What's the politics of this world? Mm -mm. The economy. Magic. Yes, magic is on this list. (laughs) Yes, we'll get to that. Culture. Religion. Mythos. Social system. A.K.A. COMMUNICATIONS! (laughs) Why? (laughs) Because communications is... Everything. It's communications. Whenever I mention communications to writers, especially amateurs, especially amateurs, they're like, well, I mentioned there are phones, the media, people talk to each other. Mm-hmm. 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 Yeah, you did that. And? Communications, fun fact for everybody who has no idea what you're talking about, communications is the backbone of society civilization it's the why (laughs) this is how everything works your freaking dresser communications the dresser that you have you know that was communicated by people designed built a price put on it you bought it or inherited it the person you inherited it from bought it that the entire purchase of your dresser or whatever you store your clothes in, is communication. The fact you know to put your clothes in that. Yeah, the fact you know to fold your clothes and put your clothes away is communications. It's what you were taught to do. You know, the way, the scripts that we were talking about, the way you interact with people is communications. You were taught to do that. The car you drive, you know, is communication. People had to discuss this. Why are we building cars? Why invent the car? (laughs) Why invent anything? Why attack these people? Why take their land? Why burn up natural resources? Why do anything? Why go with this political structure over this political structure? That's all communications. Why this mythos over that mythos? Why this religion over that religion? You know, or no religion. You know, like, I'm Christian. I have atheist friends. A lot of interesting conversations with them. You know, we have a cool conversation about why we believe the things we believe. And at the end, we'll disagree. We'll agree to disagree. Yeah. You know, communications. Your thoughts, your feelings, your body, you know, who you are as a person, and, like, just everything. Colors! Mm -hmm. Colors communicate! There's a reason why poisonous frogs are neon! (laughs) Like, hi! They're screaming, don't pick it up! Don't touch it! (laughs) Everything is communications! That includes the magic system! Mm Mm-hmm. Your world is built, if you write stories, your world is built on communications. The reason your characters are doing what they're doing, the reason the story exists is communications. Read any fairy tale. Seriously, just read a fairy tale. The whole thing is communications. You know, like Cinderella, she wants to go to the party. Why? Because it'd be cool. How does she know that? Because it's been communicated to her by everybody else. You know, party equals cool. Your language system, the way your language system makes you think of the world, the, the word usage people use. Everything. Every single freaking thing. You know, okay, another thing with Cinderella. Why, why is it that the ripped up dress is not acceptable to wear to the party? Why does the fairy godmother have to show up and give her a new one? Because you don't wear crap to You the don't party. wear crap to the royal <laughs> castle! <laughs> you, you need an old fat lady to help you out! <laughs> because you don't have time to fix it! Mm-hmm. It's tonight! Yeah! <laughs> it's like, that's communication, that whole song. You know, let me fix, let me get you a coach. Why does she need a coach? Because walking there might not be a great plan. Especially in glass shoes. No yeah, way. That's okay. <laughs> you know, why do you need a coachman? Why do you need the horses? Because that's how a coach works. 
Also, why if you're, if you, this woman has magic, why not just make her a car? Because they didn't have cars. <laughs> that might be a little weird. <laughs> the decisions people make is based off communications. The point of your story is based off communications. Why your characters care is communications. The story don't got it. <laughs> And now back to your regularly scheduled program. Like, okay, why didn't Sage write to her mom or contact her mom? We don't know. We don't even know how you communicate with anybody. Yeah, how do you communicate with these people? I mean, clearly there's a communication. So far, the only communication we saw, distance communication we see is weird ghosty dude talking to Olive, the cat girl. Yeah, we got so, that. That's it. Uh, they have trains, so they, they got a train. They got technology, but if you have technology, then what does the magic do? Is it like certain people it, he uses? Yeah. It? Why do certain people have? It seems it? like anyone can pick up a terror sphere. What's so special about your group? Yeah, it's like, you know, why does anything of this happen? If you, if you have the ability to, like, summon things or create things or do anything, fly. I mean, they, they ride a broom to get onto a train. <laughs> why? Because she doesn't know where she's going and she doesn't <laughs> want butt sores. I don't know. I don't know. Like, they have no postal system. I'm not entirely sure how they're... Trans, uh, transit system works. You don't really get a sense of like how money works because you see them like they're poor. Okay, so how did you get into the school? Can you pay the tuition? You're from a backwater place where your dad's a baker and your mom does something. You guys don't need to work to pay your tuition? Yeah. You, Is your dad sending money? Like, how does this world work? Are you on a scholarship? What's going on? You know, what's the, what's the social structure between men and women? You have the ability to make anyone any gender. Does that completely change their physical appearance and strength and ability? Like, if you're a dude, you transition to a girl. Can you have kids? Girl transition to a dude. Can you impregnate someone? How does that affect <laughs> social structure? No, well, don't get hinted. I just get what that means in our world. Yeah, in our world. Everything's kind of like, well, it's like our world, so therefore you should get it. This isn't our world, sweetheart. This is a fantasy world. I want to learn your fantasy world. Mm -hmm. And how do you do that? Communications. It's a thing. Mm -hmm. Actually, everybody, everyone here who wants to be a writer, I want you to pull out your notes for your story right now. I want you to take the notes that says world building. I want you to scratch that out. <laughs> With some white out or a marker or something and write communications instead. Because the communications is the why behind everything. Why your character makes one choice over another. Mm -hmm. Communications. Why one option is taken away from them and another one is not. Communications. It's all communications. All of it. Your understanding of everything is communications. It's not just the fact that you're watching a video or listening to a podcast and listening to me yell and scream on the other end of a microphone. That's communications too. But you clicked on it. Why? Because you had an interest. That you had everything that led you to clicking on this video was communications. Your thought process, your understanding of this show, <laughs> your somewhat interest in learning more. That was all communications. You reading the text Same. Of, oh. the, of the video. Two girls gonna lose their mind over this thingy. Well, yes. That's interesting. <laughs> you know, I want to hear someone have a mental breakdown. <laughs> But I cannot stress enough how important communications is. And that's why I've created this podcast. It's about communications and storytelling. And this show don't get it. Like, at all. <laughs> okay, moving on. <laughs> uh, magic system. Okay, so after my cute little rant about um, communications and how that also affects the magic system and everything. Well, the magic system would affect the way everyone thinks and acts and everything. One thing I've noticed with amateurs is they don't understand hard magic system versus soft magic system. Even though there are videos galore on YouTube. Mm -hmm. And blogs galore on the internet. Oh, yeah. Uh, I, you have no excuse. <laughs> there are books you can read. Yeah, if you don't understand the difference between hard and soft magic systems, that's shame on you and not shame on your lack of resource. Okay, so hard magic system is basically, it's more scientific mm -hmm. than the other magic systems. It has very clear defined rules. Uh, alchemy is a really good example of a magic system. Everyone uses, usually goes to Avatar, The Last Airbender, as being a good example of hard. Mm -hmm. It was okay. I think so. For the most part, it's like, okay, these groups do these specific things to matter, and so people figure out, oh, loopholes. Some people have it, some people don't. Yeah, some people have it, some don't. You can't really learn to do it if you don't have it. Mm -hmm. I don't have the, the, the magic genes yeah. or something. And we're not talking about Korra. It's, it's <laughs> pretty good. Mm-hmm. Uh, having a hard magic system. Uh, soft magic systems, like, 
Harry Potter, Lord of the Rings. I would also include uh, 2003 Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Okay. We got a pretty soft magic system. Yeah. Because they don't really explain a lot of, like, how things happen. No. You just mostly say Mystic Mumbo Jumbo and move on. Yeah. Uh, so I would say that's a good example of a soft magic system. So I found, at least in my experience writing magic systems, I prefer what I call the mid magic system, which is one thing no one talks about. And you first, now and I know a lot of you probably say, ooh, mid, I'll do that. <laughs> one problem. You have to understand hard and soft. So a mid magic system for me, and maybe someone else would have it differently, but for me, a mid magic, a mid magic system is everything that the characters understand about magic is hard. They understand why they can use it, how it works, what it does, what the consequences, pros, cons, strengths, weaknesses. Everything the character actually uses. Then you have the soft magic, which is what the character is not allowed to use. Everything that's outside of them. So like God, basically. Okay. okay? God would be a soft magic because it's like you, your, hum, your character's human brain doesn't have the ability to fully comprehend what the God thing of the world can do. Mm -hmm. It seems rather like there are no rules, even though there are rules that the character just isn't privy to. Mm -hmm. So it, to them, it's more mystical. That's what I would call a mid, and that's what I usually write, is a mid magic system, where everything my characters can do is hard, but everything that the godlike force can do or is Or forces soft. in nature. Or force of nature, whatever you want to call it. Mm -hmm. You know, karma, Mother Earth, nature, the universe. Mm -hmm. That has magic of its own, but because the characters can't tap, cannot tap into it, it comes across as a more ma soft magic system. Because the characters don't have a full or good understanding of it. That's what I like to write. But again, you have to know the differences between the two magic systems in order to write a mid-magic system. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think even like um, Avatar kind of did that. Because you have the rules of who can bend, who can do, do this and that. And then a giant lion turtle shows up and tells you you can take away. That's true. So it kind of has that. Bit mid, slightly. Kind of. Slightly. Smidgen. <laughs> but yeah, so I'm personally a fan of the mid. Um, but again, I had to learn both systems. Mm -hmm. And I realized I like elements of both. So I created my middle ground. I think are people are going to get the, the, the note that the number one amateur thing is research. Mm. Amateurs don't research <laughs> squats. Yeah, kind of. <laughs> okay, so what is this? I see, what, is this a hard magic system or a soft magic system? This is a whatever they felt like writing that day. So no magic system. Because, <laughs> okay, you have the, the old magic and the new magic. Mm -hmm. Which, okay interesting idea you have like the more traditional that. herbs potions runes stuff like that and then you have alchemy circles alchemy circles then you have like maybe magic which is more cheat codes mm -hmm. kind of a thing oh you, you can just program it seems more technology at least when that one girl casts a spell and turns over the stone it looks very tech like computer chip also they talk about downloads and downloading and stuff like, download oh so it's a smartphone okay he's put a spell on a usb drive <laughs> yay <laughs> Okay, whatever. Um, and stuff. This is so, actually kind of cool. I like the idea. I want a technical, I want a sci fi story where spells are basically computer codes. Yeah. And you can, or kind of like viruses, except you can put them out in the world. I think there was like one comic where it was because um, it was like ancient text, but the reason, we could, but they translated them using technology, therefore you need technology to access the magic because no one knew the language. They just used computers to like hack oh, the code cool. or something. I think it was a comic book, but that's cool. I haven't read it, but I think it's on my list. So. With this, you have, okay, you have old traditional potions brewing, which is with hats and little black dresses, and then you have staffs with electricity balls and computer coats. Mm -hmm. Okay. Interesting is people upgrading. One seems to, apparently, according to Sage, uses your, like, internal power kind mm -hmm. of a thing, or the Earth's power. So, and, and then- It talks about her mom plants a tree. Yeah, her mom plants a tree magic. every time she uses magic, which I'm like, wow- you're 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 dissing the girl who's the woman who's environmental friendly. Yeah. Great job, show. Um, <laughs> yeah, they talk about her mom's conservative. Is like why? Because she plants trees, <gasps> the horror. which would improve the air quality and the world. So why you diss? Okay. Uh, anyway, um, why are you guys on the side of technology? <laughs> Okay. The Tarot's fair. It, it seems kind of like the wand logic, mm -hmm. where you can't. You have to learn how to use the thing, but it's basically magic in a stick. You can just wave at something and it works. 
or is channeling more of your magic mm-hmm. or something, but according to them, has no cost. So it's basically a cheat code. So, and then they make the comment in one of the episodes, like, oh, is the magic in the earth fading? Woo! Is that from everybody using cheat codes? Is that from someone using a lot of power? It's kind of implied that the magic, yucky, yucky, rotty stuff. Are they wasting magic? Yeah, they're wasting magic. It's just kind of like, oh, I can use my magic for everyday items. So you're just wasting a magic that could have been used to heal something. You're abusing it. Like, is magic like oil where, like, if you use too much of it, you're eventually going to run out or like um, helium or something? where the earth only has so much mm-hmm. of this resource. Something like that. And so because you're not giving back. But to me, it kind of sounded like old magic had a way of you use the resource from the earth, but kind of like Full Metal Alchemist where you have to give something back mm-hmm. so the earth can heal so you can have magic later. Like the whole planting the tree thing. Yeah. So then shouldn't the story be about going back to like being like the more primitive times of magic? What's wasn't going on? It wasn't draining? Because like, is the magic in the earth fading? Like d- d- disappearing, fading or leaving? It's like, okay, if that's what's going on, then there's got to be a cause. Also, where'd you get that one? Because all you saw was a bunch of yucky, gooey stuff. How does that mean fading? I'm not sure because like the whole the whole idea of the magic is fading, which is fine. Mm-hmm. I didn't hate that. And then or it's kind of this little tiny fight. It's not even a fight. There's like this little tiny argument or disagreement on new magic is clearly better, but it's like, is it a safer, cleaner resource than old magic? Or is there like a pro and a con to this? Or what? Because the solution at the end is seems to be combined, but the combining doesn't solve anything. It's just no, it just a helps them blast the bad. It guy. just makes Sage feel better. Basically, what yeah, it's for. It, 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 validates validates her. You, it validates Oh, I can use both. Yay, I'm bi magical. As far as I can, it was not a term in this show. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. <laughs> uh, bi magical. Love it. Okay, anyway. So, it. that never was an issue in the storytelling. Again, what was the point of this whole story? Well, like, we never find out what they're guardians of. Oh, yeah. It's also part of That was my biggest thing. Because you find out, okay, we're guardians. We're going to a magic school to become guardians. But there's no guardian adults. Part of the last two was Caraway and Lavender. And Lavender's missing and gone to the bad dark side. And Caraway's now teaching. So there's no on the books guardians actually saving people from the boogeyman or anything like yeah, that. You don't see any guardians. No one talks about what they do, what they're, what's expected of them in society. You don't see them wandering around. You go, oh, you don't have like trading cards of guardians or something. At least Monsters Inc. had them like, go, oh, that's that guy. He's He's got mm-hmm. that record of doing this many scares. You've got this person who does that many scares. Mm-hmm. You have like, reference, like, oh, you're so cool. You do this. The closest thing we have to people in guardians are a big deal is it's the freaking sword. Yeah, the sword and the is sword, a bigger deal. And the sword's hanging around. Like, why did you take the sword They're with like, you? like, oh, you're Lavender's daughter? Oh, Lavender's like, kid. Oh, that's so cool. And, and it lasts for, like, five seconds. And, it's and like, you're yeah. just like, why does anyone care? We haven't even seen a freaking guardian. No, we haven't seen a legit Outside guardian. Outside the teachers, and the teachers are trying to kill the students. Yeah, literally. So They want to. Like, they really want to kill the students, and the parents are okay with this. Yeah, so, and it's worse than Harry Potter. Harry Potter's kind of like a side effect. I mean, you don't it. want your kids to die. You're in a society where the same, same-sex marriage is a thing. You're all going to lose the population in a couple of years. Yeah, unless uh, trans magic allows you to impregnate people. To Moving on. Okay. This problem. Writing. The writing of the show. Now we're really getting to more technical Here we go. things. Um, one of the biggest signs of amateur writing is the lack of effort. I would notice that with amateur writing. It's like, well, I, I, I put words on a piece of paper. Stuff, stuff happens. So, I, yes. Th- 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 I did what the happened. TV did. Yeah, I I saw things on the TV and I copied it. Okay, problem with copying. I know we're not talking about plagiarism. <laughs> there are these things that are in the public domain called cliches and tropes. Yeah, and we can use these things. There is no limit on these things. No. You cannot go to jail for using them. You cannot sue someone for having a similar idea to you because cliches and tropes are not suable. Yep. Fun fact. So, what's the problem with this whole... Okay, so like we're saying, one thing with amateur writing is you can tell they didn't put any work into this. I know you're probably thinking, well, I'm clearly not an amateur because I put work into it. Do you? Really? I mean, this is a a tough truth I had to face. Because when I first started out writing, I was 13. And I was like, well, I I did stuff that I've seen on movies and (laughs) uh, books and TV shows. So... Therefore, this should work. I got my pages literally ripped up in front of me by adults. Okay? Mm -hmm. Telling me that my story was crap. And my reaction to that was, 
why. I did everything that I understood at the time. Is it just because my word usage? Is it my grammar? Is it my spelling? What was the problem? And I realized what the problem was. I could put basic events together, Mm -hmm. but there was nothing behind them. There was no, say it with me, communications! Yep. Why were the characters doing this? Why was a reaction this way? Why does the world work this way? Why did I have this trope in there? Was it, did the trope help the story or was it holding back the story? Did I need to change that and get rid of it? You know, I didn't understand that as a 13 year old. And I didn't understand it for years until I started to understand communications better. And I was like, oh, now I'm starting to get this. Clichés and tropes are not necessarily bad. No. The problem is they are overused story elements and beats that when used properly to be like, okay, here is something I don't really have a reason to go into. Put in a cliche. They're they're more like band-aids, you know, that you put over little cuts Mm -hmm. in your story. Not cannonball wound size (laughs) plot holes. No. I'm talking little little things that are like, okay, this is, or maybe some makeup just to touch that up a little bit. Where it's like, okay, here's a cliche or a trope, but I need that so that I can focus more on this other thing that's going to take more time to explain. So kind of like you have a character and it's like, okay, this character needs to go on an adventure and I don't want to explain his phone dynamic. Orphan. Yeah. That's a cliche. Yeah. Or story trope. You know, I don't, I don't want to have to sit there and worry about parents having a problem with the, this <laughs> character off, off by themselves. Mm-hmm. Orphan. Yep. You don't need to explain that. Maybe have a reason why they're dead. Maybe. But you can put like car crash, plague, murdered. You know. Insert, never knew them. Something. Never knew them. I was dropped off on the orphanage steps. Something. You know. Cheat code. Basically, it's cheat a cheat codes. code. It's basically a cheat code. That's what cliches and tropes are technically for. This show depends on them for life. This is their life support. This show is on life support and they're connected to tropes and cliches on both sides. Mm-hmm. And validation for breakfast. <laughs> like, this is the show. Everything is a trope. Everything is a cliche. We've seen it a million times before. It doesn't do anything with it. Like, it doesn't affect the girls in some different way. They don't use it to, like, try out some different things. Like, you you have a whole society with, like, same-sex marriage and transgender. The cousins, for instance, Sage's cousin, cousins, would be a great example of this, where it's like, you have these fairly cliched characters. You got the butch, uh, more masculine girl and the mm-hmm. more feminine girl. Mm-hmm. And, okay, so we got their personalities down pretty well. Since we got cliche stands in there mm-hmm. of a happy marriage, yeah, we can now do more with the fact that they're lesbians. You know, are they thinking about we want to have kids at some time and we're trying to decide do we want to adopt a kid or does one of us want to like take the transition potion to turn into a dude and impregnate the other one or something? Or is there like, or you want to get inseminated or something like yeah, that? Yeah, or officially inseminated or something. No, there's some interesting things you could do with that. I would be very interested to find out, you know, what are they going to do with it? They don't do anything with it. Nope. They, they just happen to be lesbians. Yeah. They could have been straight. They could have been. But the fact that they are lesbians opens up a door for, like, lots of different, you know, things. It does nothing. No. Yeah. This whole show does nothing. Because they're like, oh, we'll just use some cliches. Okay, we have a happy married couple. Okay. What do you want? A medal? <laughs> None of, no one used the cliches to be like, okay, I don't want to get into their personal marriage relationship. They're happily married. That's actually a cliche. Yeah. Slam, bam, thank you, ma'am. Okay, move yeah. on. No, so let's we... actually get into some more interesting discussions. Mm-hmm. Okay, so this is one Essie brought up. Uh, and that is, the show is out of order. Now, if we went over everything that's out of order, this would be five hours long. Yeah. And, or two days long. And the problem is, most of this, they don't even finish the things that are out of order, so I can't even tell you what resolves anything. Mm-hmm. So this one, and find a copy of this podcast on YouTube if you need to be able to see the slides, but I will try to describe as best I can. <clears throat> So I decided to pick the, the the root rot, which is like the main conflict. This is time's biggest issue because that's what's destroying her home and what she's trying to learn how to fix. The reason that is because it has elements of it that you would think would lead to a bigger resolution or more problems, but it kind of just, it happens and then gets dropped before, mm-hmm. in, before the last episode. I'm going to tell you the episodes of the events that Holly presented them, this. and then we're going to put them in order. Okay, so the root rot thing. So you introduced to it in number in episode three, where um, you see the root rot. You see that Neppy Cat puts a uh, terrace fierce wand into the tree and kind of pushes back the root rot. No one mentions this, by the way, mm-hmm. and no one comments or anything. But you establish there's this root rot, and Time's upset. 
Then the second time you see, oh, they mention the root rot is when they have the healing water. And Tana's very interested in the healing water. You see her, like, oh, does it heal anything? And then she wants a vial to take home and give it to her dad. That's episode seven. And that's episode seven. <laughs> After a bunch of meandering and crushes. And then the next part, she has the water. But in episode eight, very next episode, she loses it because... Um, Olive drops the vial and it shatters and it goes in the sewers. Is it episode eight? Yep. I think so. Let me check. Yep. <laughs> How much meandering is in this show? I thought that was like episode 10. Nope. Okay. Uh-huh. Okay. So it's episode eight and time's devastated. Mm-hmm. And she's like, oh my gosh, what the heck's going on with this? I, I don't know what to do now. And I'm not going to mention them when she goes talk to a demon because that doesn't really develop the rot that involves her decisions with it. And then episode 11 you see what the rot actually does. It makes a pet dragon go crazy, and during the struggle, it gets too hurt, they can't heal us, so they have to put the dragon down. Mm-hmm. And that's the last time you ever hear about the rot ever again. Hey, it's, Finley, it's... what's wrong with this? Makes no sense. <laughs> it, it doesn't have much cause and effect, does it? No. Because, okay, besides time, because time apparently has seen what this thing can do. Her friends have no clue what this thing can do. They don't even know there's a problem. They're just like, oh, weird rot. They don't okay. even really care. I mean... The other girls don't get really involved, like, entirely involved until Time mentions it when they're in the, the caves mm-hmm. getting the water. Yeah. Time mentions, mentions it. it, and then they don't talk about it, and then they don't really discuss it until Cat Girl shows up, but then they don't even talk about it. No, they it just really. see how much this affects Time, but then they never talk about it again until the dragon. Which, this is parts. something that should be affecting all of the girls because this is their world. This is their world. Do you think there will be rumors about this? Like, hey, yeah, the fairy, like, the fairy woods are like, a mess right now. Mm-hmm. There's some weird thing hanging out in the water. There's like, like you, if there was actual adults and like heroes running around, you think they would mention up in like side conversations? They would probably eavesdrop on because they want to see their heroes. You wouldn't hear that going on. You might. How'd how you fix it? How you fix it? Is move the interaction with the dragon up like a lot because they, they get on some field trip to go and help with that. Why they're in charge of that? Who knows? So okay. They get sent on a mission, which is where they run to the dragon. You see what this rock thing can do. The girls see firsthand what this thing does. And they it's see... Dangerous. It's dangerous. It, like, takes over people's minds. It makes animals unreasonable and unrational and attacking people and causes a lot of pain and suffering. And it's destroying a lot of um, wildlife. So, okay, they have a physical, like, oh, this is a problem. And they can hold on to that. Maybe time gets more moody during the <laughs> thing. And then they go on the expedition and time tells them, oh, you see that? Remember that thing when we had to kill a dragon a couple episodes back? That's what's happening in my hometown. And they're like, well, we really got to get out of here now. We got to help you out. That would lead into them trying to help her out more. So when we lose the water, it hits the audience even more because mm-hmm. the girls will hit, get hit even more. Because like, oh my gosh, you lost the one thing that would probably have helped out like your entire homeland. We, so we don't know if we can go back and get more. Yeah, and no, they don't tell us if we can go back. There's nothing really in, implied. Maybe if we don't go back and see it, which I'm not going to do right now. There's nothing to really um, get either the characters or the audience invested mm-hmm. in this. Motivating characters. Yes, that's the whole reason the story's happening. If you don't communication, communications. Like the only reason someone's going to care about that. Is because people in the story think that's a big deal. And the only reason they're going to find it's a big deal is if someone tells them or shows them it's a also, big deal. Also, wouldn't Nepi Cat more important? Because if it mainly affects the minds of animals, then he would be more like, I have a mission I need to um, defeat this rot. Yeah, what because is his it's, mission? It's, it's affecting animals. And so he, he wants to stay anthropomorphic. Mm-hmm. And be like, I'm going to fight this evil because I am Nippy Cat and Nippy Cat does the right thing. Yeah. Or whatever. And this animal, who would also would also be interesting because if it does affect animals mm-hmm. and Nippy Cat is in a stronger um, state, being uh, does it affect him because he's in more of a human state because he can understand more? Mm-hmm. Or is there going to be a danger with having an animal on your team? Yeah. All right, so we're, don't worry, we are getting close to the end. We're almost there. We're almost, almost there. there. All <laughs> right, our last section is audience. Mm-hmm. Who was this made for? No idea. Because okay, that's actually a very, very big question because they have a content warning mm-hmm. about you know there's topics and stuff on here, violence and things that are not suitable for children. But they don't use that to their advantage. No. I mean, bad language is minimum. I mean, is the only reason there is because they have lesbians in the first episode? Mm. Eh? That's, that's it? And then the only thing that kind of fits is that, yeah, they stab a lot of things. You see blood splatters. And they have to put down a dragon in episode 11. That's about it. 
I would rather put this content more than something in front of like Team and T two thousand three. Yeah, they deserve it a lot more. <laughs> Yeah. But I would even say that Avatar deserves it more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, seriously. Yeah, because Team and T, you have this whole thing where, like, you have, like, gain violence, murder, the Shredder needs a content warning. <laughs> PTSD. PTSD, also. mental health, all kinds of, of stuff. You know, how does this kind of strain affect teenagers? <laughs> yeah, are, and that show was teenagers. marketed for 9 to 11 year olds. Mm hmm. Yeah, that thing is more of a content warning, uh, which I don't want it to, but it's awesome. uh, A show <laughs> that has, like, gladiatorial combat <laughs> that has really high stakes. I mean, they show in multiple episodes that those turtles are squishy. Oh, yeah. They could die. Any any of those fights could have been their last fight. It is a kid's show, and you know they're not, especially as an adult. Mm-hmm. You're watching it going, they'll be fine. But if you were a nine-year-old watching this, you don't know that. <laughs> you have no idea how stories work. <laughs> But, yeah, that deserves way more... Co- I mean, okay, yeah, there's no blood. Yeah. It needs blood. <laughs> blood solves everything. But um, I like blood. But, yeah, that one definitely needs a content warning more than Okay, so the audience. Because the way it's drawn, and if you literally just took out, like, the blood splatters, this could have been on Cartoon Take Network. out the bad words. It's it's literally a, just a cartoon. It's a, it's a kid's show. Which leads us into our next thing that I've heard a lot of amateurs really don't get. It's a concept called genre. Mm-hmm. Amateur writers have zero comprehension of this. Mm-mm. At least very minimum comprehension. Because there have been a lot of amateur writers. I'll read their, their stuff. And I'm like, okay, I read it. It was interesting. Um, I would like my life back. But <laughs> what was uh, the genre of your thing? I have literally heard this. Well, it's it's kind of an a urban fantasy romance with uh, some paranormal stuff and it's kind of a mystery sort of a thriller but it's supposed to be action packed so it's got, I guess maybe the action genre yeah we've heard this a lot <laughs> oh no you're just gonna blow it <laughs> one genre per book people <laughs> one genre per book okay here's here's some good examples i got three examples right here <laughs> for those of you listening to the audio i will read these to you all right, I'm going to ask, I'm going to say the title of this for the audio people. People who are watching this as on a YouTube video, you can see this, so you get the cheat. Congratulations. Mm-hmm. Lord of the Rings. Essie, if I said, what genre is Lord of the Rings, what would you say? Political satire. I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm joking. She okay. fails. I know. Okay. No, no. So- <laughs> Lord of the Rings. It is a fantasy book. Why? Because the main story is it's in a world that is not ours and involves magic and involves taking down a big bad. But... Essie, three characters get married at the end. So? And one of them has 13 children. Shouldn't this be a romance? Well, if you could play that one, then it's a family picture. <laughs> <laughs> it's Hallmark. <laughs> okay, well, I want that now. Lord of the Rings Hallmark edition. <laughs> Ew, don't. I'll do it. <laughs> um, okay, all right. So why is it um, not a political satire? Because I mean, there, you have this whole thing with, like, the races and the kings and politics. What Wouldn't that make it a satire? Because it's not the point of the story. The story is about... It's also played straight. It's also very played very straight. It's very much... It does make commentary on things like industrialism and yes. um, leaving, like, destroying the world and also monarchs and family and stuff. But it's played straight. These are problems. They're not making fun of it. No. Legitly, it's about, it's, there's no time they turn the camera and say, isn't that dumb? Yeah. There's no time they ever do that. Okay, next one. This is a movie I absolutely love. I watch it every Christmas. It's called While You Were Sleeping. Essie, what genre is While You Were Sleeping? Rom-com. Why? Because it's about a girl whose life sucks, and when she meets a special, like, she has a crush on a dude, and when her life is turned upside down because of said dude, she runs into other dude who is more important, like, more special to her, and is merged at the end. Shouldn't this be a story about, you know, a story about how people don't take holidays seriously because she's forced to work on Christmas? You mean it should be more about, like, a working class yeah, drama? Working, yeah, shouldn't it be a working class drama? I mean, her <laughs> life's in the pits. No, I think it gets resolved with marriage and it's a feel-good picture. But doesn't that show the patriarchy's <laughs> hand on <laughs> destroying women's lives? Can't they just be um, toll booth operators at the, at the train and be happy about it? <laughs> Why do they have to get married to be happy? Shouldn't it be a, a commentary on that? Why? Because I would watch it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, third and final. Yes Minister. What is Yes Minister? It's a TV show from like the 90s, 80s. 
something like that. I honestly don't know. It's a, it's a BBC TV show. What genre is Yes Minister? Political satire. Why? Because it is telling you real events of what's going on in the cabinet, but presenting them in ways to show you how ridiculous the things we do in politics is. Yeah. Yeah. I also can't think of anything to <laughs> compare to. Okay. Okay. So go back to Lord of the Rings, for instance. I think Lord of the Rings is the strongest one because it has more narrative to it. Like you said, I said, okay, so three characters get married at the end. Why is it not a, a romance? Because it's not the point. It's You're... not the point. It's not the point. When I when I ask my uh, friends or people who let me read their, their work, what genre is this? And they say, well, it's got these things in it. So therefore it's a mix of all of these genres. No. What I'm asking is, what's your focus? Lord of the Rings, the focus is the fantasy aspect of it. You got the good guys and you got the bad guys and they're (laughs) fighting. Fantasy in another world. Mm -hmm. If you took out the fantasy element and you put it in our world with a time period, it's a war movie. Yeah. It's still not a rom-com or romance or anything like that. Even if you had a romance between two characters, it's still not a romance Mm -mm. book. It would go in uh, either fantasy, if it's in a fantasy world, or a war but yeah, there are elements. Mm-hmm. You can have elements of other genres. In fact, romance isn't even a genre technically, because the only time it's a, it's a it's a genre is the entire focus of the story is the fact that it's a romance. Yeah. Only reason it's a genre. That's the only thing that matters is these two people getting hitched. You know, while you were sleeping, you want Lucy, Lucy to get pe- uh, pe- not pe- Jake. Jake. Jack. Well, Jack. 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 I told I see this movie a lot. I don't have the pain. Peter's the comatose. Okay. <laughs> the whole point of that story is you want Lucy to pick the right brother. Yeah. You want her to get Jack, not Peter. Yeah. You know, the minute you see Jack, you're like, oh, I want her to get Jack. Kind of a thing. Or I'm just that way because I've seen the movie too many times. Maybe. <laughs> That's the whole thing you want. In Lord of the Rings, you want the good guys to win. Mm-hmm. You know, all the little personal things are add- add-ons to them winning. Mm-hmm. When I'm asking people, what is the genre? And they're like, well, it's kind of a mix. No, you pick the genre that it is and then you pull elements. This one is, High Grade Spice is weird because it's technically a fantasy. Technically. technically. It's not our world and there's magic involved. It's fantasy. So it technically goes on that shelf. But then they'll go into, well, what's the age group? As we've mentioned, what is the age group? It's like, if you take out the swearing and blood, it's for kids. It, it doesn't tackle anything. They don't have any hard conversations or anything like that. Because even with the issues everyone was making a big deal over, it, they're very surface. Mm-hmm. Everything's surface. It's very sure. much like Sesame Street PSA. Like, we are going to explain what transgender is thing. Mm-hmm. Kind of like that. Yeah, we're going to ex- explain to you what is in Earth terms and what is basically on Earth. Yeah. But that's genre and they have absolutely no concept of what they're doing with it. Okay, gimmick. So for anyone who doesn't know what a gimmick is, uh, it's, Thank you, Google. Okay. <laughs> it's a trick or device intended to attract attention. Thank you, Google. That's what Google says. Yeah, Google. Because <laughs> I didn't know how else to phrase it. <laughs> yeah. Their whole thing is that they're progressive. I mean, anyone remember their cute little trailer? Oh yeah, the first trailer they dropped was like just that. It's a very modern reflection of the world. Our characters are really diverse, our cast is really diverse, and that's one of the things that excited me the most about it. We are 50% female in all the creative roles, and our writer's room is 100% female. We're telling stories that no one's ever seen before, even though we only told stories that everyone has seen. I don't think anyone has seen stories quite like the ones that we're going to tell. Their whole gimmick is we're progressive. You know, you got lesbicans, you got trans, you got, you know, probably some bi stuff going on with the main girls, possibly. Possibly. You got a lot of stuff going on that's very progressive. And they did absolutely nothing with it. No. I mean, the lesbian couple are background, are characters. They they rarely do anything besides get... They really don't do anything. It's a terrorist fear. Yeah. That's basically... It didn't have a place for it to crash. And then the cool teacher, I thought about it, and as far as I know, he barely does anything. Yeah, they had this really cool trans teacher named Caraway, who I actually kind of liked. Yeah. In a lot of ways. I thought thought it was pretty cool. And they bring up... Their top three things, at least to me, was same-sex relations. Mm -hmm. So in this world, it's completely fine. Yeah, no one... To have same-sex relations. Uh, Transition magic. Okay. Cool. That's an interesting thing. I would have liked more explanation or exploring mm-hmm. on. And uh, the concept of Nepi Cat, where it's like, okay, so your whole thing is Guardians. I still don't know of what, but let's argue that 
The guardians are there to protect something mm-hmm. or go on missions, you know, it's like something. a guild thing. If you can have something like Nepi Cat, which is an animal who has a very strong, I must fulfill my mission and oh. do this and do the right thing. Why don't you just use animals and give them missions to, to do? Because, you know, wouldn't it be better to send the animal on the mission than risk people? Or at least send the animal with a person. Do they have familiars? Like Yeah, what? or just, just an animal to help them out. Is something? Is Neppy Cat unique? He's the only one we see. So mm-hmm. I'm willing to argue he's unique. But if he's unique, then why is no one scared of him? Except for that one part where he's charging through the courtyard. But that's mostly because Amaryllis was shooting things. I think they're more scared of Amaryllis. <laughs> and everyone had a right to be. <laughs> yep. You know, no one's scared of him or they just think it's a costume like the Munsters or something. We don't really know what his mission is. It's not clear. Mm-hmm. This is what his mission is. And it's like, okay, so you got this, and why don't you do something with it? Transition magic. As I've mentioned, does it change your chromosomes? Okay, it's not permanent. Yeah, she has So to... it's it's a completely different argument from transitioning in our world, because if you do transition, it is it does cause terrible after effects if you decide you don't want it. If you are actually trans and you're and transitioning is the right thing for you, it's good. But if you decide to detrans, it really affects your body. Mm. In some irreversible ways. And you also, you can't change chromosomes. You know, does this potion actually do a full trans, but is that why it's also not permanent? Is it? It's probably no one talks about it. Because Caraway says he has to take a potion once a month. Yeah. So potion to stop him from retransitioning into a girl? I guess. To keep him male? I mean, you know, I would have liked more on that. It's like, okay. And also, as I mentioned, you have same-sex marriage. Do you use this technology for same-sex couples to have children? Mm-hmm. If it does change, does it turn your eggs to sperm or something? That'd be interesting. Yeah. You know, I would have liked more explored on that and talked about. Because it's their world, not ours. Mm-hmm. And no, But no, they, they seem to keep things very much in a how our world works scenario yeah. and didn't do anything particularly interesting with it no and i'm like but that's your gimmick your gimmick is we are very progressive i don't think anyone has seen stories quite like the ones that we're going to tell this is kind of our ideal how we wish the world could be yeah which i have no problem with you guys making like you have every right to do that all right because you guys have waited forever and i know there's probably at least 10 comments in the comment section we are gonna go to scarborough fair Yep, which I think is the biggest thing they face planted on. Yeah, because I got a lot of comments. Oh, not a lot of comments. A few people who comment. Please go back to my other video and comment. Uh, (laughs) Thank you for commenting, by the way. And I do appreciate all those who did comment. Um, (laughs) Your comments were nothing to do with my podcast. It kind of broke my little heart. Uh, I got over it, though. Mm-hmm. People did mention the whole Scarborough Fair thing because they also didn't really bring that up. No, because I wasn't really, I didn't really see it as that. It literally after like two days afterwards, I was rereading Wikipedia and was like, "Oh, that's what it is." <laughs> yeah. So. Um, okay. So this song had nothing to do with the no. story, as far as we know. Um, okay, so Scarborough Fair. It's a song about unrequited love. The two lovers give each other impossible tasks to perform. In this anime, could have been about those things. I mean... If you squint. If you throw your back out, yeah. <laughs> okay, so, yeah, that's what the song is about. It's about unrequited love and lovers and... And it's medieval setting. Depending on how you're translating the spice. Because spices and flowers all have meaning. Especially in English culture. Especially and it seems to be very Western magic influence. Very Western. This is so Western magic. Mm-hmm. It's one of the reasons like, it doesn't feel very anime. Because no. it's so Western. Yeah, they don't really go into, like, the the characters, they don't really play with the characters with their certain names. No. Like, they don't really think about, okay, so is Rosemary called Rosemary? It's her whole thing with her mom memory because Rosemary represents love and uh, memory. Your remembrance. Yeah, remembrance. That's what Rosemary represents, you mm-hmm. know, and I wish they played more with that. Like, mm-hmm. does Rosemary have really good ability to remember things? She's the only person who can clearly remember her mom, mm-hmm. you know, but then how would she get fooled by the mimic? Yeah. Of her mom. Or is it because he knows her mom? Maybe. You know, everyone else is uncertain. It really should have had her, um, the mimic be in front of more characters, so they could be uncertain. She's like, well, my mom always did this, and this person did this, so this that means it has to be my mom. Mm-hmm. 
Because I remember like this. Like, they don't really use that. Yeah. Of... And then Sage is for where warding off evil. Mm-hmm. Okay. She's a magic user. So maybe if you squint. Apparently, personally attracts evil. That was a I new one. I wish they did something with that. <laughs> but she's, it's also a help you with digestion. And she was the palate cleanser of the group. So. That could be what her use She was only like a one. <laughs> really? Time yeah. is to touch with fantastic creatures and apparitions. So okay, she tries to talk to a demon, with... so maybe... It fails. Yeah, it fails miserably. Um, solid bringer of luck, exuding good vibes. Which is kind of funny, because she's not the one with the good vibes. Uh, it also assists in searching for one's true love. So did this anime use the song at all? Well, the short answer is no. <laughs> That's a short answer. Yeah. I mean, okay, they named the kingdom that... If it was a kingdom, I didn't see anything about the political structure. I thought you said it was called Scarborough. Yeah, like, because, um, yeah, they mentioned we're going to Scarborough, and then... Oh, the city's called Scarborough. Well, it's like the kingdom... Because I think her, um, Times mom says we gotta go to Scarborough. King- I don't know she's a kingdom, because the, t- the city is, like, Lingard. Mm. So, the- it must be the kingdom is Scarborough, or something like that. There's a castle in it. I'm assuming it's a kingdom. Who knows? And then they play one stanza from Scarborough Fair in the very first episode, and then mm-hmm. a couple times people say... The, the characters' names in the order of the song. Parsley, Sage, Rosemary, and Time. It's like, that's it. Literally, that's all they do. Possible unrequited love between Sage and Rosemary? Maybe. Maybe. And their characters are constantly asked to do difficult tasks. Which Maybe. makes no sense why they're asked to do that, because they're a bunch of kids. Because they're minors. Yay! And we don't care if they die. Yeah, who cares? So we mentioned Scarborough Fair. <laughs> yeah, so we did mention the Scarborough Fair. So thank you for asking this song. So congratulations! Yay! Give yourself a round of applause. You survived. You made it. You got to the end. Okay, final thoughts? Malika said it's not the worst thing. If we were doing a perfect salvageable or trash, it's salvageable. I think there are elements that could have worked. That's the, the one that makes me the most mad at it. Is like it could have been something kind of interesting to watch. Or at least palatable. Pa- passable, palatable, something. But it's like, it's just there. Like, literally, like, yeah, I got mad at it a couple times when I was watching, going, why, why, wait, that was the one thing you suggested for everybody not going to mention it? Then we were watching it, and then literally, the next day, my brain just kind of started expunging it. Cause I it was like, a hard time eh. remembering this show. Yeah. <laughs> if they hadn't come out with that first trailer, which I'm sorry, I think they did that on purpose, no one would talk about this thing. It would just fall into the, oh yeah, country world originals. I think more people are mad because the money didn't go towards actual Japanese creators. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's where a lot of the anger comes from because it's like, you didn't send it to Japan, the money, mm-hmm. and you gave us this piece of crap. It was what, a constellation price? I have very little anger in this because I did not spend money on Crunchyroll. No. And so it's like, this is just a good example of terrible writing. But people who did spend money on Crunchyroll and were promised your money is going to go to, to this, and then it's not, I think they have a lot more right to be furious with this show. Mm. Yeah, I don't think that much is salvageable. I liked the the way they did the tarot spheres. Yeah. I think that's probably oh, my yeah, favorite that was the aspect. Best part. Was tarot spheres. Uh, like I said, I loved Amaryllis. I loved Neppy Cat. Oh yeah, it's the same bit of story writing I see in like modern Marvel movies, in a lot of stuff nowadays. And so it's like, it's just worse somehow because at least with the Marvel films, you can tell they were done by professionals. The story was just crap. Yeah. Like I didn't like go watch um, the Shang Chi uh, review. Yeah, because you know it wasn't as bad as people were expecting it to be, but it was still a piece of crap. Yeah, you know, and I and I've seen a lot of YouTubers who are like, I'll watch it again, and I'm like, I'd only watch it again to rip it up. Yeah. It's like I don't think it's that worth salvaging. I think there are aspects that are worth salvaging, but the show as a whole, no. It's kind of like so. after you wreck the building, you can go through and pick up some nice bricks. Yeah, that's basically it. So I hope you enjoyed. But, but this thing deserves to exist. So yeah. It exists. It's there. So, it's there. again, go live your dreams. Yep, live your dreams. This thing exists. Your crap came to you. <laughs> Thanks for listening. <laughs> I'm going to hate editing this. <laughs>